Watching KHQA this morning. It's your news now. 514, time to check in with Kristen Aguirre, who is out and about this morning. Celebrating a big anniversary. How's it going, Kristen? I sure am. I am here at QMG, and they're celebrating their 75th anniversary. Coming up later in the show, we're going to talk about what they have in store for their celebration, and also we're going to take a look at history through the medical field and how it's evolved over the past 75 years. See, the thigh bone's connected to the hip bone, I told you. Or um, you told me. Where's the drinking bone I, on the skeleton? That comes later tonight. <laughs> I don't have the drinking bone. All right, let's get a check of this. Talking Medical this morning. Yeah, she's live in Quincy at Quincy Medical Group. Uh, I see you found a new friend behind you. Yes, that's Sally the skeleton. I named her already. <laughs> well, we are here at QMG and we are celebrating their 75th anniversary. It's hard to believe that this place just opened 75 years ago. It's so big. Behind me, they actually have a really good display of kind of years past. Um, the Quincy Medical Group was started in 1937 by Dr. Walter M. Whitaker, um, Dr. Ori F. Shulian, and Kent W. Barber in 1937. They actually have a recognition of the founders display right down there. It's really cool to see all of these really unique things they have. They even actually have an old nurse's jacket here. This is, I guess, what nurses obviously used to wear, not really the attire now. Um, and they have some old pictures here, old you know, utensils that were used. Coming up later in the show, we are actually gonna hear from some doctors on how the medical field has actually evolved since 1937 and how things have really changed and how it's more state of the art now. Look like they've gotten taller since that skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Sally's yes, just short. Yeah, a lot taller. Yeah. Well, I, not my skeleton. It's probably still like this big. As, as tall as Sally. <laughs> probably as tall as Kristen. Yes, yes I'm yeah. saying Kristen's as tall as down. We head downtown now where Kristen Aguirre is live at Quincy Medical Group. Yeah, she's learning about the history of a medical field, in, or um, not the medical field, healthcare? but healthcare here in town. It's been going on for 75 years. Yes, it's a long time and they are definitely celebrating it this weekend. With me now is Lori Craig, who's in administration here at Quincy Medical Group. A lot has changed since you first started, right, Lori? Yes, it has. I've actually been at Quincy Medical Group for 35 years and under I've worked under one company under three different names. I started at Quincy Med or Quincy Clinic and then it changed to Quincy Medical Group, and now we are, and then Quincy Physicians and Surgeons Clinic, and then Quincy Medical Group. Um, we started in administration. There were actually administration, accounting, personnel, and purchasing all in one department, and now we have each department with about eight or 10 employees in each department. So we started with about 20 doctors and in probably about nine specialty areas. And now we have over 130 providers in about 29 specialties. So we've grown. What is the administration like today? Because we've been saying, you know, you have things you had to get carbon copied back then, and now everything's computer, emails. Yeah, probably the biggest change would be the electronics. Um, we used to write patient checks each pay period, and our administrator actually signed each one. Now we don't even get a paycheck. <laughs> it goes direct deposit. We don't even see our paycheck stub. We go on the computer to see um, the totals. And another thing would be the um, electric typewriters. We didn't, we didn't even have the computers. <laughs> we were typing on the electric typewriters. Um, everything was carbon copy. We didn't have the copy machines. So. Um, a lot of file cabinets, all of our applications, um, you know, were paper applications and we would file them away and... So it's very interesting to see how much the back of the medical field has changed, administration. Coming up later in the show, we are actually going to hear on how the medical field changed and Lori's going to tell us a funny little story about what the waiting room used to look like. Hmm. <laughs> All right. I'm intrigued. <laughs> now the file. Kristen Aguirre <laughs> taking a look back at the medical field's history this morning. Yeah, that's right. She's live at QMG. How's it going, Kristen? It is going good. We're talking about everything in the medical health care field. Lately, we've been talking about um, administration side. With me now is Lori Craig, who's been with the company for almost 35 years. And we are in a waiting room. But a while ago, it wasn't always like this. Yes, 35 years ago, this waiting room may have been a little cloudy. Um, that is because patients were able to smoke in the waiting room while they were waiting for their doctors. 
a lot of our doctors were pipe smokers and they were able to smoke in their offices. So you would kind of have to weed through the waiting room. So that has changed drastically. How is it, it you, this is a smoke-free campus now, right? Yes, it's a smoke-free campus. And um, you would have to walk a block if you wanted to smoke now, not in the waiting rooms. Right. So. And so you've been with uh, Quint QMG for the past 35 years. How have you seen it evolve? Um, we've had, mostly the computers have changed everybody's lives. Um, we had a medical record department of about 30 to 40 folks who just pulled records each morning. They delivered them, hand delivered them, and then um, filed all the paperwork and put them away at night. So now, of course, the electronic medical records, you have everything at your fingertips. Um, also, um, so computers really have changed your life, but personally, how have you grown here? Well, um, mostly with, uh, again, the computers, and um, we don't even have any paper applications anymore. <laughs> we had a, an, um, an applicant come in not too long ago and wanted to complete an application, so. Are things, are things a little bit easier now with the computers? Yes, everything's at your fingertips. We had tons of file cabinets. Um, <laughs> we had a whole room of file cabinets. <laughs> So computers really may have made an impact everywhere in the world, including here in the medical field. So we've been hearing about the administration side coming up later in the show. We're going to hear from a doctor on how the medical field has evolved over the past 75 years. And even I can see behind you. She's going to point out the same thing. <laughs> One and the same. Um, the express check-ins that they have now. You don't even have yeah. to go up to the desk and check in that way. You can just tap yourself in. I know. Quick and easy. In and out. Well, let's check in with Kristen Aguirre again. Yeah, she's live this morning learning about the medical field, 75 years worth of it. How's Lots it going, Kristen? Changed. <laughs> Hi, well, I am just getting my blood pressure checked here at QMG, and Dr. Dureska said I passed the test. <laughs> Doctor, how long have you been here? I've been here 30 years. Wow, and in the 30 years you've been here, how has everything changed? Uh, when I first came here, we had two separate clinics. We had a lot of individual practitioners within the clinic. Or, or within the community. We had two separate hospitals, and now we have one big hospital. Uh, we still have two clinics, but uh, the private practitioner in our community has pretty well disappeared. Everybody's either affiliated with the clinic or with uh, Blessings Clinic. Wow, and the medical field itself, how has it changed? Uh, I think the technology is, uh, that's the most obvious thing, whether it's in our medical record system uh, going completely electronic. In my own field, uh, over the past uh, 25 years, we've gone from where the laparoscope, which was the only minimally invasive surgery that was done, and we did it for doing tubal ligations in women, has now exploded. Once the surgeons found out they could actually take an appendix out through a laparoscope, uh, now they've um, expanded that to so many different things. They can do bowel resections. We can do hysterectomies through the laparoscope. Uh, so uh, I think that's the biggest thing. The technology has just changed medicine so much in, in the last 30 and years. And the laparoscope is where they kind of, they go in through. Small incisions through the belly button and other little ports uh, along the abdomen, which allows overnight stays in the hospital, much quicker recovery, less risk of infection. Uh, little to no scarring, right? Well, there's small scars, but uh, you know we can hide it around the belly button. And, and instead of having one large incision, it really just makes the recovery so much better for the patients. All right, thanks, doctor. Well, technology has evolved on an administration side and also here in the technology and the actual medical field. All right. Very interesting. Pretty cool. Kristen Nagiri is on our TV screen right now. Yeah, Hi, how's it going, Kristen? It's going good. Oh, uh-oh. Oh, oh, I'm oh no. Oh, oh, goodness. <laughs> Um, There's so much free medical supplies here. They're not free. <laughs> They're not free. I don't know if you can take them. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Draska said he's going to pat me down to make sure I didn't take anything before I leave. <laughs> With me now is Dr. Draska from QMG. This weekend they are celebrating their 75th anniversary. And all morning we've been talking about how the medical field has ov evolved over the past 75 years. We've been talking administration and we've also been talking kind of medical technology. But how has patient care changed? I think patient care has moved more to the outpatient arena. We used to admit everybody into the hospital. We'd admit people a day or two prior to their surgery. Now people come in the same day, they get their surgery, they go home the same day, or a lot of people, they just stay overnight and go home the next day. So outpatient has become extremely 
large. Everything we're doing, we're trying to do it as an outpatient. This also puts more pressure, I think, on families to help their loved ones to recover from their surgery. I think that's something that a lot of people don't realize. Yeah, you're staying overnight and getting your surgery done, but then a lot of the care that used to be done in the hospital now is done as an outpatient or you're coming in for some additional therapy after you're discharged from the hospital. How has the patient-doctor relationship evolved? I think the patient-doctor relationship has always stayed strong, and I, I think that's probably the most important thing. It's why most of us go into the medicine to begin with, is to have that interaction with our patients. So I don't think that's really changed. What, what was the reason that you got into the medical field? Um, just something that seemed like I wanted to do. I thought I was pretty good with people, and um, I love what, I do, what I'm doing. I love to take care of women, don't like to take care of men. <laughs> And how has your profession grown here at QMG? Well, when I, when I started out, there were just uh, uh, maybe two or three people here, and now uh, we have a department of four, soon to be five uh, this coming year. I think we, we never used to have more than about five obstetricians in, in the community, and, and when our uh, new physician arrives this uh, July, we're going to have a total of uh, nine in the community. So I think that just means better access for everybody here in the community. Um, and really quick, let's talk about the correct way to hold this stethoscope. Okay, the worst thing that ever happened was ER and George Clooney, who started wearing a stethoscope <laughs> like this. Real men, real doctors, real women doctors, we wear them like this. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Dreska. Well, QMG is celebrating its big birthday this weekend. I'll have more details coming up later. Well, it sounds like you're having a good time over there, Kristen. <laughs> I am. And the next time I go to the doctor, I'm going to make sure they're wearing their stethoscope the right way, because <laughs> yeah. then I know. Yeah. Yes. You know if they're, they're a real doctor or if they're George Clooney? Uh, if George Clooney walks into the room, we've got a whole other problem. If George Clooney walks into the room, you better I call me. I'll be right there. my doctor. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> 644. Well, if you are interested in learning more about QMG's history, make sure you check out their 75th anniversary celebration Sunday at the Croc Center from 2 to 530. They'll be everything there from wellness screenings to a bouncy house.